Its name was synonymous with animals, fun, and Australia, though many people might have known him better as the Crocodile Hunter. He was beloved and admired by his family and fans all over the globe alike. His unexpected death sent a shockwave and many around the globe felt the sadness of his untimely passing. For most of us, wild animals are incredibly beautiful creatures which are also dangerous, so ultimately best left alone to their own devices. There are some people out there who don't necessarily fear animals, but still carry massive amounts of respect for nature's most extraordinary beasts. There's nothing that could come between them and their huge amounts of love for animals, sometimes not even death. Steve Irwin was definitely such a person. Not only was he a TV personality feeding crocodiles in front of the cameras like he'd feed puppies, but he was also a wildlife expert, an environmentalist, an advocate for nature conservation, and a zookeeper. Steve had lived his whole life amongst animals. His father Bob, a wildlife expert with a special interest in reptiles and amphibians, and his mother Lynn, a wildlife rehabilitator, started the small Queensland Reptile and Fauna Park when Steve was a child. The boy grew up around crocodiles, and it's safe to say his wasn't a usual childhood. At age 6, he was given a 12-foot scrub python. At age 9, he was already handling crocodiles, and even wrestled one under his father's supervision. Later in his young adulthood, Steve became more and more involved with the park, but he also worked as a volunteer for Queensland's East Coast Crocodile Management Program and captured over 100 potentially problematic crocodiles. In 1991, he took over the park and eventually renamed it Australia Zoo in 1998, bringing it the recognition it deserved. September 4, 2006 was just another normal day for the TV personality and wildlife expert. Steve was 44 and already had 10 years of experience in television with the smash hit series The Crocodile Hunter that also gave him his nickname and, as always, couldn't seem able to take a break. He didn't want to take a break. He was in love with his work, both on TV and off camera. He was in love with his wife, Terry, and he was in love with his kids, eight-year-old Mindy and two-year-old Robert. Life was good and nothing seemed to be able to change Steve's mind. On that 4th of September, Steve and his crew were at Bat Reef, a part of the Great Barrier Reef off Port Douglas, a small Australian coastal town. They were taking part in a production of a documentary, Ocean's Deadliest. Although Steve felt good and motivated, not everyone on the crew felt the same. His best friend and crocodile hunter producer, John Stanton, couldn't help but feel something was amiss. In fact, three weeks before the filming started, John went as far as to call Discovery Channel and ask them to call off the whole thing. But Discovery had already spent a lot of money on the project. John had to make amends with the documentary being filmed, but he still underwent a few medical tests and prepared a will in case something went wrong. For the first time, he couldn't shake the deep fear that he was going to die. And Steve's speech to the crew a couple of days before filming started also disturbed John Staten. Steve thanked all of his crew for being there and helping him. To any other member, it probably felt like a normal thank you speech. But to Staten, Steve's close friend, the whole thing felt unusual and eerie, kind of like a finale type of speech. Still, there was nothing he could do. They had to film. Steve Irwin and John Staten woke up early on that Monday. There was work to do, sure, but they wanted to spend a little time reflecting together before getting down to business. They were on the deck of Steve's 75-foot research boat, appropriately called Croc One. The two friends looked over the ocean as they had a cup of tea. Steve was happy, talking about how good life was to him. He was in a good frame of mind, always ready for another adventure. But that was Steve, ever energetic, fun-loving, and charismatic. As the day progressed, the crew realized the waters were a bit too cloudy to film for Ocean's Deadliest. There wouldn't have been much interest in a documentary that couldn't actually show the creatures, so they decided to give it a couple of hours, or maybe even a day. But Steve Irwin wasn't one to sit idle and wait for things to happen. He made them happen. Steve saw the delay as an opportunity to film some footage for his daughter Bindi's upcoming wildlife show on the Discovery Kids channel. It was going to be called Bindi the Jungle Girl and have his eight-year-old kid as a presenter. The channel hoped Bindi could step into her father's shoes and educate kids all over the world on nature and its creatures. And Steve thought this a brilliant idea. 
His daughter was a mini Steve, so it was only natural for her to get her own kid-oriented show. So Irwin told his cameraman, Justin Lyons, to get his camera and prepare for a quick dive. They were no strangers to snorkeling. They initially planned to shoot scenes with a tiger shark, but they couldn't find one. Instead, they decided to film a stingray. They took an inflatable away from the main boat. As they dived in, there was nothing that could have alerted them about what was about to happen. The water was shallow, the divers experienced, and stingrays are not exactly what one would call a dangerous creature. Sure, they have stingers, but they're not usually aggressive. When they sense a potential danger, stingrays either swim away or hide their flat cartilaginous bodies beneath the sand. They rarely attack humans, and when they do, it's because they were provoked, such as when they're accidentally stepped on. Beneath the water, Steve and his cameraman Justin Lyons saw a beautiful short-tailed stingray. It had an approximate span of six and a half feet from the rear, a beautiful creature, worth showing on TV. They soon finished filming, but wanted to take a quick shot of it swimming away for his daughter's TV show. He wasn't afraid after all, this was a man who handled crocodiles on a daily basis. But something unexplainable happened, something terrible that would change things forever. The stingray became agitated and in an instant, it jammed its razor sharp tail up, plunging its barb directly into Steve Irwin's chest. Justin Lyons didn't put the camera down. Steve had been hurt before, but he had a rule for his cameraman. They had to film, always, no matter what happened. So the camera rolled while the stingray started stabbing wildly. By the time the stingray swam away, Steve was standing in a huge pool of blood. The story that came out in the following days was that Steve pulled the barb out of his chest. But his cameraman Justin Lyons, who was there recording everything, said that it wasn't true. The jagged barb went through Steve's chest like a knife through hot butter. Steve knew he was in trouble. He stood up from the chest deep water and started screaming, It punctured my lung. But that wasn't the truth. The truth was much, much worse. Justin could see a two-inch wide injury over Steve Irwin's heart, with blood and fluid coming out of it. He and the rest of the team threw Irwin back into the inflatable boat and sped to the main boat. Justin was terrified, desperate to help his friend, directing other crew members to put their hands over the wound and telling the crocodile hunter he had to survive for his kids. But Steve Irwin calmly looked at his friend and simply told him, I'm dying before losing consciousness. The cameraman started CPR. The attack, the CPR, and medical efforts were all captured on film. As soon as paramedics arrived, they only needed about 10 seconds to determine Steve was dead. Even if the crew had been able to get him to a hospital, he wouldn't have survived. The damage to his heart was massive. The footage of his accident has never been released to the public and most likely won't ever be. And just like that, in a few seconds, the beloved Steve Irwin left the world doing what he loved most, interacting with an animal. His wife, Terry, and their kids, Bindi and Rob, were on a trip in Tasmania when they heard the news. Terry was called by the zoo manager, and she had to fight the incredible sadness she was feeling and gather her strength to share the news with her kids. When they arrived home at Australia Zoo, they were surprised to see media waiting for them, but there were also flowers from people who mourned Steve. Terry never remarried. To her, Steve was a soulmate, and no one could come close to what they had shared. Instead, she and their kids took over Australia Zoo and Steve's life work. Both Bindi and Robert are zookeepers and dedicated conservationists, trying to make their dad proud every day. As for the world, it will always remember Steve Irwin not only as a funny, goofy showman, but as a conservationist and wildlife lover who used unusual methods to spread awareness and educate the public on the importance of nature.